people don't show up. Ah, that worked. All right, Yay. I yes. apologize for the uh, technical hiccup we had. And um, all right, like it's not recorded. So people would not know until we say. All right, so um, let's get started. So good morning, good afternoon, guys. I know it has been a while. I was not able to join last couple of meetings because either I was traveling either was, or I was in the conference. So I'm, I'm happy to see you guys again. And um, yeah, let's get started without any further ado. So Christian, do you want to give any updates from the technical side of the project? <clears throat> sure thing, I can give a couple of updates. So let's see, um, especially since we uh, sort of had a very short call last time. So the biggie to mention for sure is that 6.0.1 is out. So the latest patch release in our current LTS series. And that one is a biggie and people should definitely consider upgrading. There are a bunch of good fixes in there. Um, that you can see if you go to github.com slash zeek uh, and pull up the issues there. And there's always sort of a, a, a pinned issue there where we track um, all of the things that go into our patch releases. So you can pull that up there, but the, the, the short version is you should definitely upgrade. Um, and then a second thing I wanted to mention is that um, we have made some changes to how we maintain our binary packages. Um, and the change there is essentially that we're now providing dedicated naming for the binary packages for our LTS releases, where the version number, the, the, the .o number, um, is in those packages. And it means that basically if you install those, you have a guarantee that you will stay on that release train. So if, for example, you install the Zeek you know, 6.0 LTS series of packages, then we will never move you to any other series of um, releases when we update those packages. And this is in contrast with the packages for the latest version. So whatever is the latest version, this includes the .1 and .2 release trains. And we will continue to basically sort of, you know, pull you across those whenever new versions come out. So you can basically now choose what you want. And the the, the intent there is basically to signal that the, the .1 and .2 releases are a little bit more sort of ephemeral, if you will, um, because we do stop supporting them when the next release line comes out. So if you use binary packages, pay attention to that, and you basically now have more control over which sets of versions you want to install. And then a third one I wanted to mention is that we've revived project boards. So if you go to github.com slash Zeek and look at projects, you see project boards for the upcoming Zeek releases where we map out um, what we're currently working on and what we're hoping to work on in the near to medium future. So that gives you a little bit more visibility. Um, I think that was all I had in terms of updates. We also have a demo today from Arne on JavaScript. We can either do that now if you guys prefer or later in the call. But I think given that we don't have that much to talk about, I think right now is actually a great time if that works for everyone. And we might do that more often in the future um, since it seems like a great way to show off things sort of on a on a regular basis. Does that sound yeah. okay, Father? Yeah. Let's, let's do it now because otherwise oh. people tune out of the recording later. So let's do it now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> All right, take it away. OK, hey. uh, I just want to give a quick demo for like, what you can do with the JavaScript integration in Seek, which is part of the container image that we release uh, starting with 6.0. Uh, and concretely, it's uh, connectivity to MISP, so Malware Information Sharing Platform, where you can uh, upload indicators of compromise, and then they have a REST API to download that data as Intel feed. There previously existed a package called DoffHawk, which I've never used, but uh, it came up that it needed fixing. And I looked at it, and it used active HTTP, and it looked really bad. And so I thought maybe that's that's a good use case for JavaScript, because HTTP function, so basically HTTP or HTTPS functionality within JavaScript is really easy to read as compared to Seek script. Um, so I'll, I'll share my screen. And I have on the right side a, OK, do I have a black? <laughs> yeah, it's, black dot it's, it looks perfect on it. It looks perfect okay. now. Good stuff. Or black boxes. Um, so there's a, this is a MISP instance that I'm running locally in, in containers. The project is called MISP Docker, I think. Um, and it has this concept of events 
And I'm, I'm not a misc user, so I, I just clicked and, and figured out what works. So there's, I have this one event here, which is uh, a collection of all known Tor node IP addresses. So if I click here, um, that event has something called attributes, and the attributes are a number of destination IPs, and you can sort of click somewhere to update them. Um, but basically, it's just just IP addresses. And we can access those via the, the REST API that MISP offers. So I'm going to switch to the left side where I have um, so the, the terminal. This is in a, in a Docker container which has access to my network host system. And it already has the, well, I don't really have a link to the, this is not... So there's this this package called seek.js misp, um, which is also so which is installable via CKG, and the container that's running in the top window basically has that package installed, um, and some more settings to to actually work. Um, so if I start seek in the upper window. like this, just with, for example, the interface and passing local, uh, it will tell me that the MISP URL is not set. Um, so I'm just using the prepared uh, invocation, which also has an API key for the local instance that I'm using, and this insecure setting because well, it's talking, it's, it's just a self-signed uh, certificate and debug output. So if I run this, monitoring my Wi-Fi, we see a bit of debug output, and then one is that it was searching for attributes, and it found about 9,000 attributes and logged some information how long they took. But those 9,000 are basically the Tor IP addresses. So now when I start locally, so when I restart my Tor daemon locally, we should see Intel matches in that seek output. Um, so I'm doing that. Yeah, so the Tor daemon connects out whenever I restart. So we just got two Intel matches on uh, exit nodes that, that my system connected to. And what we can also see is that so the, the SeekJS MISP package reported back sightings to the MISP instance. So if I go back into the web interface, um, we, we see 780 sightings have been reported before. If I now refresh that site, is 782. So basically, the, the seek instance I was running was telling the MISP uh, instance that it saw those um, IP addresses and you got the feedback here. Then. That's all I wanted to show. Um, yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Thank you, Arne. And um, so we'll uh, publish, I think, a pair of blog posts in the next few days, uh, one on the Zeek side and one uh, on the core light side more that that talk more about this JavaScript stuff on the on the Zeek side more about sort of the basic capability and then um, folks in the labs team and, and and on the core light side have sort of built the first packages with it and they are sort of working on a nice deep dive in what it takes um, to publish packages that that use that capability much along the lines of what Arne just demoed. Um, so yeah, this is I think pretty exciting. It's basically opening up this whole sort of ecosystem to to Zeek scripting, which is very exciting for us. Um, thanks, Arne. I, I think that's all we had on the technical side, guys. Perfect, yeah. Thanks, Christian, and thanks, Arne, for the um, demo. That's really cool. I'm pretty sure people have questions once they would either see this recording or once they would go through the blog post and try it out. So hopefully they'll reach out to us on our Z Slack channel, and we have different uh, channels for like development and if you have questions and we'll be more than happy to help you guys there if you guys try it and have any questions um if you guys have question now for either of them then please feel free to ask all righty now if um, nobody has any questions i can actually move along and to ask richard if he wants to share anything from the communications and media side sure um you might see more about this later final but um the, there's a training event that's happening at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab 
on 23 October. And we have three Zeke days uh, upcoming, one of which is actually happening right now at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. And that's where Kelly is, I believe. Uh, the next one is occurring on October 24th at uh, Washington University in St. Louis, in St. Louis, Missouri. And the third one is on the 16th of November in Frankfurt, Germany. And I believe Robin will be there uh, speaking. So if you want details on any of those events, they're in the probably easiest place to go is just to community community.zeek.org and check the latest issue of the newsletter, issue 32. There's links to all of them. All of them are free. Uh, they go to Corelight, but we're just collecting uh, registration information so we know how to how to plan for how many people might be there. Uh, if, you, if you happen to be going to B-Sides Augusta or the Security Onion Conference this weekend in Augusta, Georgia, uh, you'll see some representation from the project there as well. And I believe uh, tomorrow evening, the event where they put together all the attendee uh, swag, I believe uh, Kelly's going to be there helping out. So that's all I have on the communication side. Awesome, perfect. Looks like uh, there is a lot happening in the Zeek world. And if people would want to take advantage, they should actually look up. And these most of the Zeek Day events are free. I mean, all of the Zeek Day events are free. So uh, I would highly encourage community people to go and check them out and just network and connect with fellow Zeekers. So thanks Richard for sharing all this cool information about the trainings going on with Zeek open source. And I think lastly, I just, uh, like for the training subgroup um, project side, I just wanted to give an update that um, this year me and Christian will be there and Ashish will be there. We'll be hosting, I think Richard brushed up on this uh, briefly when he was giving update that we will be having a Zeek training day event during the NSF Cybersecurity Summit on 23rd of October. And that event is going to happen in Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. Uh, NSF is hosting that event. So you have to go through the NSF registration page and their training is the day one training. So you, you can select the day one training and whatnot. So there will be two parallel tracks. Ashish will be covering the hands-on Zeek scripting. And then me and Christian will be covering the um, intermediate to Zeek where we will be going over the cluster architecture and then some of the management framework and some of the new topics that we haven't covered in any of the past trainings. So we are pretty excited. We are still working on the content and hopefully we will have a communication going on um, to all the uh, attendees um, who have registered already in like next two weeks or so. So if you have registered already, keep an eye out for the communication from us saying what you need to do to prepare for the training. And then we will hopefully see you guys in uh, on October 23rd training if you guys have registered. It's only in-person event. So I think we will be live streaming on YouTube. I'm not sure though. I, I will double check with Kelly on that, but it's pretty much local and we all will be there. So I will, I will be excited to see whoever is going to make it to that event. So that's pretty much on the training side of things. Um, are there any questions on any of the topics that we discussed today? All right, going once and that's it. You know, sometimes you should just surprise people. <laughs> 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 All right. So if there is nothing else, then I think I can give you guys back the rest of the 10, 13 minutes of your time. And I'll see you guys next month in our next community call. So thank you so much for joining. And you guys have a great rest of the day. And I'll see you guys next month. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.